Hello? Oh, oh, hello? Everybody, how are you doing? Guys, welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. I hope you're well. Will, did you get a pedicure, a manicure? No, I wish I did, though. You ever just look at your body and just feel disgusted with yourself for, like, the littlest things? Yes. So I'm feeling right now with these nails. Like, look at these things. They are gross. They look fine. God, I they wouldn't. They look fine. I what are you complaining about? <laughs> they look totally I, fine. I, I, wanted to, I wanted to trim them earlier today, but between everything else that was happening, I just I couldn't. So now I have to deal with these talons. And uh, this is why nobody loves me, because I am a gross human being with gross hands. How you are you all wife. doing on this fine Tuesday? <laughs> yeah, she's and multiple children. To. She's contractually ob- obligated to love you. Two time back to back. Sex haver. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, hello. Uh, so happy that you're here. Um, yes. I we got listen. I was not. I I've been very busy the past like three days. I was doing a lot of shit today. No idea. Gamescom was happening. Just snuck right up. Just waltzed yeah. right into my life and just just dumped all of these game announcements that I was not yeah I, I was not prepared for I was not ready for this I, I was I was uh, scrolling through Twitter while my son was napping on me and then all of a sudden all the video game websites I follow were like Hey Gamescom starts in two minutes I'm like already <laughs> that was fast I saw so. a Dreamcast guy tweet about it. He was like, getting ready for Gamescom. Like, he's not going. He's just going to report on it, I assume. Right. Yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, okay, whatever. It's like, it's not a, you know, it's Gamescom. Who cares? Isn't it? Yeah. It, it, where is it? Germany. Yeah. I, just, I was going to yeah. say that. I didn't want to be wrong. Um, yeah. It's in Germany. Like, what do I, what do I care? I, I care <laughs> about the ones that happen here, you know? And then, well, it happens. And then just I my Twitter, every time I would glance at Twitter, all this shit, all this new random shit about games that I actually care about. So in the past, game Gamescom was always this sort of like weird um, second tier E3 in a way. Yeah. There was E3 and then Gamescom and then the Tokyo Game Show. Mm-hmm. And Gamescom was actually bigger than both of those combined. Because it was like, you know, the E3 press only event and then like a week of like fans can come on the show floor and experience everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and now that E3 is dead, basically, Gamescom has sort Amen. of like filled that void of what E3 used to be or the idea of what E3 used to be. Uh, it sounds pretty fun. I've never been, but uh, yeah. it sounds like a good time, if I'm being honest. Yeah. I mean, I don't like E3. But Gamescom has always been doing the uh like 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 announcements, and then the next week is is open to the show floor. Anybody can get in, like yeah. like, like media, and then everybody else. That seems yes. like a great way to do it. Yeah, because then the media can get their job done, and then everybody else can experience everything that they uh that that they heard about all the all the exciting yeah. th- things that they heard. Sounds like a great way to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, the first thing that we have to talk about because it's in the title <laughs> that happened at gamescom was uh potentially the most expensive piece of pokemon merchandise no that's not true they made a plane but this, this yeah. is this is a different vehicle this is a car yeah uh do we have an article on the car in the keep no nope. I'll, I'll find one i'm I'll looking one. at it right now it's a mini cooper it's a specific type of mini cooper Oh, Ace Man. It looks futuristic as fuck. Is it electric? <laughs> that would be sick. They do have an electric Mini Cooper. It has a built-in projector. Yeah, in the front. So that when you're about to crash into somebody, they will see it coming from a mile away. And you can project, uh, you know, I don't know, like your Xbox gameplay right on, right on yeah. their face. <laughs> All right. I put a Verge article in there. Uh, Mini has teamed up with Pokemon to develop a Pikachu-themed concept car that's fittingly all-electric. There you go. Oh! The automaker showcased the car during the Gamescom opening night live event, uh, which lets you look up, which lets you hook up your game console and project your gameplay from the front of the vehicle. 
Mini used its Ace Man concept for this collaboration, which it previously revealed in July with the Pokemon mode that comes installed on this particular vehicle. Pikachu takes over the vehicle's main display when the vehicle's turned on uh, while digital light while digital lightning bolts travel across the entire dashboard. It's pretty cool looking. Yeah. But the coolest part of this concept car is that you can actually plug in your game console and then use your vehicle's exterior projector to display your gameplay on whatever surface your car is parked in front of. Obviously, it would have to be dark enough for this to work, and you would have to find a flat surface so this projection won't look warped. I uh, need Mini the didn't... technical specs of that. <laughs> <laughs> Mini didn't offer any information on which type of game consoles the car would support or how or how adding controllers might work. Uh, this is just a concept after all, but it would uh, still be pretty impressive if Mini actually managed to include this feature in one of its future vehicles. So the reason this is such a big deal, it, I mean, it's a concept car, so that's upsetting. Mm -hmm. But this is a big deal because you have been able to buy Pokemon cars before. <laughs> Yes, I was trying to look those up. They I, were like I have, back when Pokemon first launched. Yeah, I have a picture here of the Pikachu Volkswagen uh, Bug. Yes. And there's also uh, the Lugia Chrysler PT Cruiser. That's what I was looking for, yeah. With the fins and everything. Yep. The reason I know about this is because of TikTok. I saw a TikTok of somebody who had who like a like a like a like a she looked like a like a mid-20s uh, uh person who just purchased both cars she just she was like fuck it and just got both of them look at the tail on this lugia <laughs> see i remember like seeing ads like promotional stuff for whatever pokemon game this was and i remember vividly the, the lugia pt cruiser thinking like oh they've one up themselves from the pikachu bug it looks stupider PT cruisers were in insanely popular. There were yes. so many PT cruisers, and they were I the know. ugliest car. A little, a little uh, uh, a note from Wolf Den Dad in the chat, contributing to the conversation. Believe it or not, the Mini Cooper <laughs> is the least stolen car in the U.S. Uh that that makes sense because who the hell would want to steal that? <laughs> <laughs> I listen. I, I might be in the market for an electric car. There you go. If they put this one on the market, I can make a freaking video out of it. Yeah. So, Mini, what's up? <laughs> I have a potential promotion. It's your boy. I have a potential promotion that I would pay for. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, again, just a concept. So, yeah. there's no, there's no, you know, there's no date or anything. There's no even plans to yeah. ever release this thing. The only <laughs> thing that makes me think it might actually happen is that there have been special edition Pokemon cars before. So this would be the third one. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm missing any other ones, but uh, they haven't done it since the Lugia one, to my knowledge. I feel like if the most realistic situation is elements of the Ace Man car are going to make it into future mini cars. So the Ace Man itself won't make it to production, and that means the Pokemon Ace Man will not make it into production. Uh, but that said, you know the descendants of the Ace Man could very well get Pokemon branded in the future. Oh, that's lame. <laughs> that's I thought this was like a maybe. Here it is, maybe. But they straight up said the Ace Man's not going to be in production. They didn't. They didn't say that. I'm just saying, based off of what I know of concept cars in oh, general, okay. that okay. they're literally just concepts. They don't yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean they're going to go into production. They use concept right. cars to show off ideas they're working on. I understand. I'll also say that this car uh, doesn't really look like a like nothing's Pokemon about it except for the the screen, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, like nothing this, on the well, outside. Yeah, nothing on the outside's Pokemon. Like that's kind of yeah. upsetting too. I, I make it unless there's like a special Pokemon color scheme. Like that's that's what you, know, you need. That's what you need. Yeah, you need to be Pokemonified. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't hate it though. It's kind of it's kind of yeah. cute looking. 
Um, well, it's all, a mini. That's their shtick. So uh, that was announced at Gamescom, and uh, it was in. <laughs> I guess Jeff Keeley was there doing his normal thing. I just yeah. saw this picture on Twitter of him with it, and it. I got immediately reminded of Homer Simpson and his concept car. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's such a perfect thing. Like, ev- like the concept yeah. cars always look wacky and stupid, and they are like yeah. super unrealistic. Uh, th- I thought this tweet was a certified banger, and it did not. It did not do good. Wow. <laughs> I thought that was a good people meme. don't understand comedy. <laughs> no, you don't. We definitely didn't forget at all to uh, talk talk about our good friends over at Manscaped. We would never forget about no, Manscaped. No, of course not. Why would we forget about them when support for the Wolf Den podcast is brought to you by Manscaped? Yes. Uh, the, the best in uh, men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped's performance package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 6 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with their exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code WOLFDEN at manscaped.com. If the math is correct, that's about 12 million balls. That's so so many balls. It's a lot of balls. And look, yes, it's a funny name and it's it's a (laughs) funny topic, you know, grooming yourself down there. But it's something that you should take seriously and Manscaped takes it hella seriously let me tell you about the performance package 4.0 it comes with the shed travel bag i feel like you forget that you need something like this to hold all the, of your, your tools toiletries in bag i use that all the time yes yes and you know what when i went nice one when i went to uh uh that last convention that i went to i was like every single one of these people definitely has their toiletries in one of these stupid things yes of course ladies and gentlemen and mostly gentlemen but also ladies too the star of the show is uh, the lawnmower 4.0 yes. uh, nutsack trimmer, as it were. Uh, make no mistake, you don't want to shave down there with anything but this. This is legitimately the best tool for the job. It is uh, waterproof. You can use it in the shower. It has a LED light on there so you can see what you're doing if you decide to shave in pitch black your life i don't judge Mm -hmm. uh it's uh you can charge it via USB-C on the back uh it helps reduce nicks and ingrown hairs uh and other grooming related accidents so that's definitely something you want on your side of course also the crop reviver ball toner and the uh crop preserver ball deodorant have you ever tried the ball deodorant uh i did a little bit of it and let me tell you feel like a new man you, do, you really do, do. it like, kind of wakes you, really you up do. a little bit but also it does also look back in the day in the old band scene it used to be the ball powder we used to put baby powder yeah. down there we used to always like be like, hey you got any ball powder and then we'd like to, we'd like share ball powder uh which is probably you know it was a different time back then uh yeah this w- would have been a better idea it's like a lotion it's very good yeah uh oh the box is you put you put deodorant on your armpits. What else sweats? Yeah, you know? what? Think about I it. I mean, they actually say that you should, if you're in the shower, you should really be cleaning your under your arms and your genitals. So yeah, you're set. Makes sense to me. And your ass. And you course, gotta get in your ass. Yes, you gotta you gotta yes, really get important. up in there. Can you use the manscape razor for your butt? The document does. Probably. Say. <laughs> There's nothing stopping you. Not um, <laughs> which something you can't use for your butt though is the weed whacker electric nose and ear hair trimmer guys bob and i are in our 30s we're getting we old. have i i am much later into my 30s we have hair growing in a lot of places and the worst place is in the nose and ear and this helps tremendously for you know full cleans or even just a quick a uh, quick cut to get you out the door because you don't want to go on a hot date with your lady friend or your fellow friend or everyone in between looking like you got hair coming out of every which way. You don't want a forest in your nose and your ear. Unless they're into that. Unless they're into that. They're probably not. The Weed Whacker (laughs) helps tremendously. This is legitimately one of the best uh, nose and ear trimmers I've ever used. Maybe the best. No, it is the best because Manscaped is paying us. It is the best (laughs) uh, nose and hair trimmer 
I have ever the, the used. Th the thing is that all their stuff is very gentle. So you can yes. really get in there. Yeah. So, I mean, it, yeah. Yeah. So it, it, all, their, all their stuff reduces uh, the risk of nicks and ingrown hair and blood. <laughs> so <laughs> if, if, you, if you care about yourself, Manscaped is what you want. Check it out over at manscaped.com. And if yes. you use the promo code WOLFDEN, spelled just like our name, yes. you'll get yourself 20% off and free shipping. And free shipping. That's, I mean, I, how many of you don't buy things if you don't get free I shipping? I don't. I will. I refuse. Seriously. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code WOLFDEN at manscaped.com. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. Now back to old us. Anyway, uh, so that's a shame that that's just a concept. Yeah. But that's not all that was announced at Gamescom. There was no, a billion no, was fucking not. games. Yes. Uh, some of them were exciting. Some of them not so much. Uh, Let's we'll try to through breeze them. through the ones that are not so exciting. The ones that we don't okay. care about, just bleh. Okay. Uh, well, the, the blurbs on this article are quick, so I'll just read them. Uh, starting with everywhere, it's hard to exactly say what everywhere is based on the trailer, but they're shooting, driving, explosion, space, and apparently an open world from developer uh, Build a Rocket Boy, slated for 2023. Yeah, this doesn't make any sense. It just seems like you can do anything right. in this game. All right. You can go <laughs> everywhere in the game. Uh, next up is Dune Awakening. It is a survival MMO, uh, open world MMO. Uh, that'll come whenever maybe when the next movie comes out we'll see uh it's not it's not an rts which is interesting because pretty much yeah. all dune games are rts's yeah that's weird yeah is that uh, uh is that what's his name uh paul yeah the guy from star wars no never mind no I don't know <laughs> oh uh the paul's father leto yeah, atreides um... of the house atreides I was thinking his real name, but blow. sure. Os Oscar Isaac. <laughs> That's yeah. the guy's name. There it is. Yeah. No. Uh, next up is Hogwarts Legacy. We got a new trailer showing off full gameplay. It, uh, it's coming February 10th uh, to last-gen systems, current-gen systems, Switch, and PC. Um, so, yeah, if you're into Harry Potter, go for it. If you're into Harry Potter but are concerned because it financially supports J.K. Rowling, um, steal it. I was gonna I, say I don't know what else you want. This is the perfect game for you if you just hate trans people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you support trans rights at all, Harry Potter, sorry about it. Can't can't consume. Yeah, that's it's unfor it really is unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, anyway. New Tales from the Borderlands. Gearbox why? announced new Tales from the Borderlands, an episodic narrative game picking up after 2015's Tales from the Borderlands. It follows three new lovable losers out to save the world coming in October. Now, call it call it Tales from the Borderlands 2. No, this is new Tales from the Borderlands. I like hate that. Nintendo I hate 3. that so much. Now, people think one of my biggest problems with Borderlands is the uh, looter shooter mechanic behind it which is the main gameplay loop of it i love and that. that's only part of it that's only part of it one of the big things i hate is the writing and people say i would like tales from the borderlands because i like the other telltale games and it doesn't have the looter shooter mechanic no i would hate it because it's a hundred percent borderlands <laughs> writing and that's not something that interests me at all the game is not fun it's not funny when you just keep talking right right I think that that got worse in later games, especially with like Tiny yeah. Tina and and the guns oh, that that talk. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's there's a, a Justin Roiland's game where the guns talk, and I'm like, I don't yes. want, I don't want this. I know <laughs> that's gonna get annoying. But yeah. but this is a Telltale game, but Telltale's dead. So this is well, no, Telltale's not dead. Like there's a new Telltale. Okay. Um, but like all the games you know from Telltale, like Walking Dead, this, uh, Batman, some of the others, aren't owned by Telltale anymore. They went back to like all the different license holders and other people. Okay. So, like we're we're gonna get to a Telltale game later in this list. Okay. Well, we got Word Song. Words former Bethesda game studio designer Jeff Gardner and Obsidian Entertainment alum. Uh, Charlie Staples formed Something Wicked Games and announced Word Song today. Uh, that's it. They just announced it. <laughs> what the fuck is it? 
Well, I don't know, but like, look at all the things that these people have made. That doesn't mean it's gonna be good. <laughs> wow, they made so many things. I'm gonna buy it. So many things. Let me put my pre-order in at GameStop. I all was right. listening to I was listening to a pod real quick. I was listening to a podcast about Mighty Number no. Nine, like that whole hype and i think that was a good reminder of just because somebody made games you like doesn't mean that the next thing is gonna be good uh medicine is pre two. pretty sure it's announced it's pretty sure it's pronounced weird song what a weird name yeah. uh, <laughs> uh dead island 2 zombie role-playing game dead island 2 was originally announced in 2014 but it's been re-revealed uh today Features six playable characters with a pulpy and irreverent tone. It's expected out on February 3rd next year for PS4 and 5, Xbox One and Series X and PC. When the hell was uh, this game? Announced in 2014. This this is now... Do you remember the trailer for this where it was dude, you know, just going for his morning jog and there were zombies all behind him and he was yes. oblivious to it? It was one of that the was... most iconic trailers ever made. And then they never showed anything else. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so now I think they switched developers at least twice. They're trying again, and they're serious this time. Dead Island Two is finally coming out. They switched developers. So who? Yeah, is publishing it. Uh, you know, I think this is another Embracer Group game. <laughs> Embr but no, Embracer Group can't be publishing it, right? One of their people well, is publishing it. Yeah, Deep Silver. Okay. So okay, so Deep Silver just reached into their their pool of developers and just shuffled it around a little bit. Basically. I want to know what state it was in before they did that. Like how troublesome was it? Was it troublesome at all? I, I need I need I well, need a, a, a behind the scenes of, of Dead Island 2. According to the Wikipedia, real quick, uh Jaeger Development was originally developing it and then was removed from the project in 2015 and replaced by Sumo Digital in 2016. Ooh. Sumo Digital was removed with a uh, Dam Buster Studio, an internal Deep Silver Studio, uh, beginning development in 2019. Ah, uh, okay. So Dam Buster Studios is currently working on it. Uh, I believe this is the old. Yes, this is um, the old Free Radical games, the developers of Time Crisis. Ooh, we like that. Uh, yes. Hopefully, it's good. <laughs> We like uh, a good time crisis. Yes. Next up is the Callisto Protocol coming December 2nd with new live gameplay showing off uh, tentacles. Tentacles is, that mutate. This is the Dead Space uh, game. Yes, this is the spiritual successor to Dead Space. The more I see of this game, the more I wonder of just how far you can go with the spiritual successor before it just becomes... Uh, copyright infringement. That's what because I kind of want to say. <laughs> like, <laughs> even the thinking. way, like, look at the main character. The way he, like, walks and holds his gun is identical to the way it is in Dead Space. When I saw this, I thought, oh, Dead Space. This is the new Dead Space. Yeah. Which is good, because, I mean, it's the guys who lost the, it's the guys who made it and then lost the license to Dead Space, so yeah, good for them. They're allowed to do this. But, like, it, like, I would like if I was EA, I would have my lawyers ready just in case. If like, I was EA, I would be like, "All right, look, we want some money, but you can put Dead Space on on this. <laughs> you can put the name well, on here if you want." Because because we're not EA, EA is making their own Dead Space, even though they were the ones who tried to run it into the ground because they hated Dead Space. Right. Uh, uh, next is for me. Genshin Impact. Uh, Hoyoverse detail this next update uh, showing off a lush rainforest world. Ooh, rainforest. When I saw this on this list, I was like, Genshin Impact's a game already. Why are we talking about it? <laughs> but then my second thought was, oh, is it on the Switch yet? Because they announced the Switch version a billion years ago and then never said anything that, about it. Never that's came. never been put on Switch yet? Nope, because uh, there's various issues preventing right. that from happening. Uh, I assume one of them is the weird way that it launches. Like, it's kind of a little... Uh, Genshin Impact is a little, like, uh, invasive, the way that it, like, launches and is always connected to the internet and stuff. And I feel like that's probably not kosher on the eShop, you know? Yeah. Um, Makes sense. But it is a great game. Play it on literally any other device but the Switch. 
Uh, so maybe I'll check this out. I haven't played it in a while, and also no. uh, I'm uh, uh, not that high of a level, I don't think. Anyway. Uh, next up is Honkai Star Rail, another uh, Hoyoverse game. Uh, what? And it just It's uh, just a brief trailer. It's a new... A new game for the makers of Genshin Impact uh, called Honkai Star Rail. I didn't know they... Because there's another game that they're making that looks <laughs> sick. I didn't know they had so many games. Me neither. So what type of game is this? We don't know. Uh, it looks like a train game. <laughs> train game. You know how I feel about that. I know you love your trains. Big train This one looks like it's in space. Space Train. How could you get better than yes. that? Uh, there's another game they're making. I forgot the name of it, but it's like a cyberpunk like anime thing, and it looks really fucking cool. Nice. Turn-based combat and all that. Star Rail is a straight-up JRPG, says Metascension. It sounds like. Oh, it sounds like. That's what it is. Well, what the fuck is it then, huh? Uh, according to Wikipedia, is an upcoming free-to-play 3D tactical role-playing game. Uh, the fourth installment in the Honkai series uh, using brand new characters along with alternative versions of previous characters, except Welt, fuck Welt, uh, from <laughs> Honkai Impact 3. Wow, Welt getting screwed right now. Yeah. Friends versus friends. Uh, this is, it's, this, one this of the is more exciting and colorful trailers. Uh, publisher Raw Fury showed off Friends versus Friends, a card-based shooter. Hey, I played one card-based shooter. I was going to say. And it was fucking card sick. Card-based so. shooters seem to be the thing. for What was the card-based shooter that I played? I forgot the name. Neon of White. I'm just... Neon I, White. I can't think anymore. <laughs> Somebody put me down. <laughs> <laughs> so where's the gameplay, though? God. I, I need to well, know how a card-based... Oh, here it is. It is the have gameplay. Oh, my God. It, it looks... At the very end, there's gameplay. It looks okay. nothing like the rest of the trailer, but it does look a lot like Neon White, actually. <laughs> there you go. I am interested. That looks interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next is for you, Will. Uh, Gotham Knights, WB Montreal, showed off a new trailer. Uh, takes a look at who else is going to be in the game. We saw Harley Quinn, uh, Clayface, more of a... Court of Owls, Renee Montoya is now currently the commissioner of Gotham City. Uh, game is coming out October 21st. Why is she the commissioner of Gar uh, Garden Gordon City? Is <laughs> Gordon is also apparently dead in this game along with Batman. Interesting. Again, not, not convinced that Batman is really dead. And who is she? Uh, Renee Montoya. She is... Um, one of Gordon's lieutenants and most trusted police uh, in the current Batman co continuity. She is actually commissioner because Gordon is, he was retired or fired. I don't remember which one, um, but she is currently running the show and she's doing so in the game, which is rad. She's fun. Uh, I'm a little interested, but I don't feel like, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to want to mash through a game. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, look, I'm definitely going to check this game out. I am in no real rush to check it out, though. Mm -hmm. I will get to it when I get to it. Next is Where Winds Meet. Action game with that sword sounds fighting like a and fart. bows. <laughs> That's what a fart is. Why didn't anyone make that joke? I just uh, did. Looks, looks like a samurai game. Looks like a pretty good samurai game. It's Ghost of Tsushima vibes almost. Ghost of Sushi. Ghost oh my god, sushi. legit. It looks like Ghost of Sushi. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That cool. could be fun. Yeah. Park Beyond. On, on, uh, who on. doesn't want to build Criticals a futuristic park. amusement park? <laughs> it's uh it's a park building game. Those are those are good. Who remembers Roller Coaster Tycoon in the chat? Nobody? Because you're all young and stupid? That's what I thought. <laughs> Next! <clears throat> Life Lies of P. Okay, okay. Without okay. reading the description. Yeah. Just going off the title, Lies of P. Who do you think P is? Who do I think P is? Yeah, watch the trailer, and who do you think P is? Watch the trailer. Oh, who do I think it is in the trailer? Well, no, no, no. Just like, P is short for something. 
Okay. And going off the art style of this trailer, who do you think, what do you think P is short for? The only thing in my head is penis. I have, I, I know it doesn't make any sense based on the trailer, but I can't, I, I, my brain can't form another word. Pinocchio. This is a Pinocchio game. What the that fuck? boy with robotic arm. Is Wait, fucking what? Pinocchio. Wait, this guy? <laughs> this guy yes. over here? That doesn't yes, make that, it. That's a guy. A hot, a hot that's a mate, dude. That's Pinocchio. That's this a, a whole Pinocchio. ass guy, though. This is a Pinocchio Bloodborne game, Robert. <laughs> that, that that doesn't make any fucking sense at all. I know it doesn't. So he's like a he's like a man now. Like Pinocchio, <laughs> like like was a was a was a puppet and then he became a boy and now he's grown up now he's now he's a man and he's in a bloodborne action rpg and, and it's coming to game pass does his nose still grow when he tells lies or does that not happen when he's a real man uh in lies of p you are pinocchio oh puppet. lies i get it i get it the title what? how can i think yes. that it's a penis thing uh you are the old the man is the old guy that made him. Yes, Geppetto. You are wow. on the hunt for Geppetto in pursuit of gaining his humanity. Uh, set in the city of Krat, uh, Pinocchio will fight <laughs> through a once beautiful city that has now become a living hell filled with unspeakable horrors. Pinocchio is effectively steampunk Mega Man, and players can char uh, change parts of his body to access new skills and battle abilities. Before you even said the word Mega Man, I was like, you know what? This looks kind of sick. Uh, apparent, uh, according to the developers, uh, lying, one of Pinocchio's defining characteristics, factors into gameplay as well, tying into procedural quests that will affect the story of Lies of P. I was going to say, I feel like a, a, a little more seasoned Pinocchio, like a grown-up Pinocchio, probably yeah. would fucking never, ever lie. He'd probably be a brutally honest dude because, of, yeah. you know, he grew up, everybody knew when he was lying. So yeah. he'd just be like, screw it, I'm never going to lie again. <laughs> Um, uh, but this game looks sick. It just looks like an exact copy and paste of Bloodborne, though. <laughs> it's coming to Game Pass day one. Holy shit. <laughs> so I expect a, uh, a live stream of this from you. I might. When is it out? 2023. Okay, I got time. Yeah. That does sound really good, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually very interested in that. So my boss at work has Game Pass, and he's always complaining that there, there's not enough uh, exciting stuff mm -hmm. uh, on there. I can't wait to see the look on his face when I tell him about this fucking game. <laughs> Who are these developers? Have they made anything I've never, that I would I've know? Never before? heard of them before. I don't know. Uh, Neo Wiz Round Eight. I am unfamiliar with their work. Battlefield. Did they work on Battlefield? South Korean online game publisher in South Korea? Oh, uh, they're on the Battlefield wiki for some reason. Maybe they published the game in South Korea, or did they do like a South Korean specific Battlefield game? Uh, okay, well then there's also Round Eight. Yeah, let's look at the Gamitsu. It is known for Bless Unleashed and Lies of P. They're they're South. Right. This looks like a South Korean game. We don't we don't yeah. know. We we they're they're we us here in America we don't know shit about <laughs> these people. Uh, Phantom Hellcat. Okay. All right. A new studio, Ironbird Creations, from publishers All In Games, announced its new game, Phantom Hellcat, a 3D hack and slash game. Has a team protagonist hunting down evil. No word on release date, but is expected to come to PC and consoles. Okay. Oh, I see some side scrolling. Ooh, that looks fun. Uh, all right, Goat Simulator 3. I think I'm playing this next week. Nice. Uh, we got a gameplay trailer here to show you what's going on. It's more Goat Simulator. My favorite part about this game is they never made Goat Simulator 2. <laughs> yes. They just went right to 3. <laughs> I was very confused when I saw this uh, yeah. game get announced a few weeks ago. Uh, I didn't play much of the first Goat Simulator. I think I played it at a convention, and that's the most that I got yeah, out of Yeah, I didn't play much of it either because... 
like I understood the joke that the game right. was broken, but I feel like in practice I wasn't mentally ready to like deal with that. <laughs> so so I kind of just like let it go, but maybe I'll get back into it. Yeah, I have no idea cuz this seems like a goat simulator that works. So I have no yeah. idea what I'd be getting myself into playing this game. Yeah. So I guess uh, I'll I'll have to see. I'll I'll yeah. I'm sure I'll make some sort of video in uh, like a week and a half, two weeks. Uh, Return is... to Monkey Island. We know about this game. Yes. Uh, we have a date. It's coming September nineteenth. Um, uh, and in the trailer they announced that if you pre-order the game, you get free horse armor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because it's still making that joke. What is that? What is the joke? Uh, the joke, for those of you who don't know, is uh, for Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, it infamously uh, offered horse, arm, horse armor DLC for $10. Oh. Okay, then. Uh, and look at us now, where we spend $100 on season passes for games that only cost 20 <laughs> This game got a lot of shit for its art style. I think it looks fun. Yeah, it looks it looks good. It makes it unique. It, it stands <laughs> out. <laughs> That's one so, way to put it. No, I'm serious. <laughs> uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the game. Yeah, that's the title. Uh, this that's is, the whole title. This is an adaptation of the cult uh, 1988 movie about Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Uh, I believe it is a multiplayer game. I'm going to see some of you play the stupid humans and the rest of you play the clowns from space. <laughs> So is this like one of them uh, Friday the 13th games? Dead by Daylight uh, games? Kind of, yeah. It's asymmetrical 3 verse 7. 3 verse 7. Okay. So the 3 yeah. are the clowns. Yeah, and then the 7 kids. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's pretty yeah. cool. Right. Is it Who's it made by? Uh, Terravision uh, games. Good something or other. Yeah, I don't think those are the Dead by Daylight guys, right? No, uh, f- asymmetrical horror game from Randy Greenback, the de- executive director of Friday the 13th. There you go, and uh, developer Terravision Games. There you go, that makes sense. It's interesting that, like, this asymmetrical style of gameplay is now like the thing for like classic movies to become video games, like Friday the 13th, uh, Predator. This, there was, there was one more, I don't, I forgot what it was called. And it was like the opposite, where like in Friday the Thirteenth, Jason was the most powerful, and all the kids were weak, and you had to try to escape. It was the opposite, and that the the one was the weakest character, and all the other ones were <laughs> the strongest. That and sounds terrible. It? Yeah, I forgot what it was. Yeah, other other people in the chat are saying Ghostbusters is getting one of those. Um, Evil Dead, the Evil Dead game is something similar to that. Yeah, uh, Evolve was the first one. Yes. Or the apparently first one all of recent time. Yeah. Uh apparently Evolve really needed a licensed 80s movie in order for it to work. <laughs> That's true. Uh speaking of Justin Roiland, high on life. Uh we got a new trailer. It is a first person shooter where the guns and other weapons talk. It is coming December 13th to Xbox consoles and PC. Uh, if this was Game Pass, I might give it a try. Or if it has a demo, yeah. I might give it a try. But I'm not, I'm a little worried yeah. that I'm gonna get really annoyed with the guns yeah. staring at me and talking the whole time. I mean, the staring <laughs> at you thing is weird. Like, mm-hmm. but I feel like if it's quiet enough, you can get you can like look past that. If it's talking, then it's gonna be a problem. Yeah, and it has to be unique enough. Like, I don't want the same voice lines over and over and over again. That would yeah. be super super annoying. Oh, he's doing some grappling. That looks pretty cool. Like even of uh, Portal Two, there's a part in Portal Two where you're you're stuck with Gladys mm-hmm. for a long time, and like she talks to you, but it never felt like repetitive or boring right. or like it, it actually felt like a, enhanced the storytelling of the game. Right. So hopefully this does that too. Uh, next is Moving Out Two. The follow up to the first game, Moving Out Two, is coming in 2023. So we're getting a sequel to Moving Out. Become a fart. <laughs> I already am one. Uh, F- furniture arrangement and relocation technicians. 
Nightmare was probably a better name for that. <laughs> this game gives me too much trauma because I am moving out. So yes. I don't want to <laughs> do it in a video game. I hear unpacking uh, is really good. That yeah, game? I've heard that's like really soothing and like, but like, that sounds like hell. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to do that in real life. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the Lords of the Fallen. Lords of the Fallen was announced from Hexworks. It is the, f- it is the follow up to 2014's Lords of the Fallen, and it's coming to PS5, PC, and Series X. And the three minute trailer Hexworks showed off the dark fantasy world. So. Lord Lords of the Fallen, the original 2014 game. Uh, fallen, should probably fallen, have a, like fell, like fallen. I fell, like I tripped and yeah. fell. You're saying it weird. Am I? Yeah, say it. Probably because I'm holding. Probably because I'm holding it a burp. Okay. <laughs> Lords of the Fallen, there the you 2014 go. Lords of the Fallen. Uh, that was a game with gold or a PS Plus game, so I'm sure everybody has it, and nobody played it because it looks like a Dark Souls ripoff. It is, and it looks like they're trying it again by putting a the in the title. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, hopefully it works this time, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Stranded Alien Dawn. Surviving Mars developer uh, Hamin, Hamin Mont Games showed off Stranded Alien Dawn, the planet survival simulator coming to early access on PC in October. Uh, players help a group of colonists survive on a deadly alien world, according to a news release. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you like your survival games, here you go. Uh, okay, and Under the Waves... Uh, Parallel Studios and Quantic Dreams next game, Under the Waves, is coming in 2023 for PS4, PS5, PC, Xbox One, and Series X. Is this like a Quantic Dream? Yeah, they're the Heavy Rain, Detroit, right. Become Human games. Weird, because this looks like a like a game. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you actually play this, and you don't just do yeah, quick time you like events. explore, yeah. Does this have anything? I thought this was gonna be like uh, what's that? What's that underwater game? Fucking uh, the 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 the. Uh, where you just explore the whole time. Yeah, I. It's not into the blue. That's a different game. Subnautica. Subnautica. Thank you. Looked like that. Yeah. Parallel Studios brings me up an architecture firm. <laughs> <laughs> About. All right. I'm looking I'm looking into the developer here. They uh, don't well, say is it, what they've worked on. Is it Quantic is Quantic Dreams developing it or is Well it's Parallel Studios and Quantic Dream. Yeah. Abzu? No. No. Uh Sonic Frontiers. I was very shocked to see this. And also yes. this trailer kind of slaps. Yeah, uh, we got a release date, November 8th, coming to Switch, PS4, PS5, PC, Xbox One, and Series X. Uh, It's weird that this is the best the game has looked. I'm surprised they didn't come forward with this first, rather than the janky gameplay trailers we got earlier. They absolutely Um, should have just not said anything until this trailer. Like, this looks good. It gives us an idea of what the game actually is. Yeah. Yeah. you see, you know, you see the hub world, the open zone bullshit. Then you see like levels that look like classic Sonic levels. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's interesting. You get Green Hill Zone for the 500th time. I got a um, little taste of uh, Sonic Forces for a second when they did the 2D stuff or well, the side scrolling yeah. stuff. Uh, but now the rest, I think it looks, I think it looks very good from here, yeah, from this, this trailer. Actually... I mean, the other shit we've seen is very worrying, but this trailer yeah. was good. I mean, it still has that weirdly serious tone that I don't think meshes well with Sonic. Uh, it has, uh, it still has like that weird, like all the extra moves and stuff that I feel it just like, oh, like overcomplicates him. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, too, uh, let's not forget the last few times a 3D Sonic game came out on the Switch, it was broken. So don't buy this game on yeah. Switch, people. Yeah. I like that whatever weird arm thing he has going on. Yeah, that's also, interesting. it turns out that's not infinite. That's a new character. This this uh, yes. <laughs> this this little child enemy yeah. thing. 
Uh, but it kind of looks like infinite. It kind of looks like the maybe the uh, tangential to infinite. Anyway, uh, so that's November 8th, which is probably too quick, but that's fine. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I will take good enough at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Atlas Fallen. Uh, Focus Entertainment and Deck 13 Interactive announced its new action fantasy role-playing game, Atlas Fallen. It's described as having a semi-open world full of ancient mysteries and threats coming to PS5, PC, and Series X in 2023. Uh, looks like there will be a lot of sand gliding. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> yeah, you know, you're just, just rolling downhill, rolling down the sand. Like what Ray did in episode seven, when she got on a little like surfboard and just rode down the sand dune. Can, that, you make, that. can you make a cinematic trailer for a game we uh, don't know anything about and get people hyped for it? Uh, well, if you're asking me if I could do it, I would have to put uh, sand sliding in it in order to get people pumped. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I'm sick of these cinematic trailers for games we know nothing about because they don't tell us anything because we don't know what the fuck game looks like. We yeah. just know what the story's gonna be like. We don't know what the graphics are gonna look like because these are, like, janked up. Like, like these are, like, you know, yeah. high hyper-res way more than it's gonna be. Yeah, it's weird because I thought people were wise to this sort of stuff from like, I mean, the original Dead Dead Island had a famously cinematic and like emotional trailer and the game was nothing like that. Yeah. So I'm surprised like people haven't like developers and studios haven't like, you know, wised up and tried to show gameplay, you know, game trailers that were more indicative of what the gameplay was. Um, But I guess not. Read in the chat says, to be fair, I do think the idea was just to establish some world building. It caught my attention. That's I fair. get that. But something like this to me just looks like every fucking other game that I've seen. <laughs> like, I don't. Yeah. Th- this world looks like every Unity asset bullshit world that I've ever seen. You know, like I, I'm. I, I need a lot more than this and 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 the only thing that's going to get me to open my wallet is seeing some sort of is seeing what I'm actually going to be playing you know yeah oh to be fair well no I saw a gameplay for the Pinocchio game <laughs> <laughs> it may not it may have been heavily stylized gameplay but it's still gameplay you still yeah. have an idea of what you'll be doing the Outlast Trials oh I gotta watch it, it is on YouTube the, the, it is the follow up is the next game in the Outlast series, and it's multiplayer. Uh, oh. Closed beta will be later this year. In what? I hope it's co-op. No, oh, it is. I think it is. That's cool. I saw two cops next to each other. Oh wait, you guys can't see. So sorry. Uh, can also be enjoyed solo for players who prefer a more traditional first-person horror experience. That'd be kind of cool if it's co-op. That'd be kind. I'd be kind of down for that. It, it'd be interesting because, you know, I've always found that horror is very hard to do in a multiplayer setting because, you know, part of what makes horror games so effective is that feeling of being alone. Right. Being alone is scary. Being with your friends is not scary. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like going through a haunted house. I guess. Uh, I'm a little interested. I, I, I don't yeah. want to play too long, but, like, I feel like that'd be kind of fun to do, you know, with, with, yeah, with someone else. Fun w- Atlas one was pretty good. Atlas two, not so much. But you know, hopefully they'll, you know, third time's the charm. This looks like the only re- like this only looks like Outlast because of like the size of the characters and I guess the like depth of the first person camera and and the fact that yeah. you're in like a hospital of some sort. But otherwise, it doesn't really. F- it doesn't to me. It doesn't fit the style of of Outlast. It looks more like a uh evil within yeah i could see that yeah yeah so uh this is weird but i guess it's outlast trials it's not outlast it's the outlast trials yeah this is uh according to this other article it's set during the cold war so i guess it's not it's not present day uh moonbreaker these names man <laughs> unknown worlds the uh the makers of subnautica which we just mentioned oh. announced moonbreaker uh, the developer described it as Hearthstone meets XCOM. 
uh, with the miniatures that you can paint. It's coming to early access September 29th. That's actually pretty so, interesting. Yeah. All you uh, Warhammer fans out there, there you go. Don't play actual Warhammer games. Play this. So it's like a tabletop game version of Hearthstone. I'm, that's pretty yes. interesting. That's inter- Yeah, that's very interesting. I wonder if they'll actually make like collectibles that like you can paint like IRL. And, like, then that defeats the, the whole purpose. Then just fucking well, do that and don't play the game. Look, man, I'm not a game developer, <laughs> but I feel like there might be a, a fun way to make, you know, real life figurines and get like virtual gameplay work. Right, right. Okay. Uh, Homeworld oh, 3. Are we, have uh, we got a you've... long way to go still, don't we? Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, no, we're almost done. We're almost done. Yeah. Uh, new footage of Homeworld 3 focusing on space battles by big fleets coming in the first half of 2023. Uh, yeah. So there's that. Okay. The Expanse of Telltale. See- Telltale? This is the Telltale game I was telling you about. Actors, oh. writers, and developers were on hand uh, for the sneak peek of The Expanse, a Telltale series coming in summer 2023. This is the adaptation of the TV show The Expanse, and it is uh, from the new Telltale studios that is like born from the ashes of the old Telltale studios. That looked like actual gameplay for a second. Yeah, it's pre-alpha footage, okay. but it looks pretty good. Some ugly characters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. D- uh, D- romantic. romantic. Cute and colorful strategy game coming to Switch on September 29th. That's the first time I've heard Switch this whole this whole game's come. Well, some of these other games are coming to Switch. This is Switch exclusive. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Okay, cool. Scars Above is the next game, a science fiction action game from Prime Matter and Madhead Games. Just a premiere trailer, nothing else. You know how we feel about that. Yep. Uh next, uh this is this was big news to me. Uh Sony announced the DualSense Edge. Pause. There we're not going to talk yes. about it. We're going to okay. we're going to talk about it in like 5 minutes. It's the okay. next topic. I want to spend a whole lot of time on it. Yes. All right. Well, possibly the biggest news of the night, Hideo Kojima announced his new exclusive podcast. It's going to be uh <laughs> he's, he's got a podcast. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, and the Pokemon car. <laughs> the Pokemon car? Yes. Anyway, uh, that's the Gamescom. Uh, I guess that's, that's just it. opening day, though, so there should be more, right? Yeah, it's right? opening day. Yeah. Uh, a lot of interesting stuff was announced. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to, like, if I'm really that excited about a lot of stuff. Like, I'm going to, like, there's stuff I would play, for sure. Right. But... You know, it wasn't a bad showing overall. I I don't think it was a bad showing. I was surprised by a lot of stuff. I'm yeah. most interested in Sonic. I thought that I was not expecting a new trailer for that, and that looks great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, that trailer looks good. Everything else we've seen doesn't. Um, yeah. I didn't know I would be interested in a Pinocchio game. <laughs> but now here we are. Yep. What a world and, we live in. And there's some other stuff like that. Uh, that card shooter looked kind of cool yeah yeah uh it was pretty interesting and and, and the, the, most of all there was a lot of big names here like dead island yeah. 2 callista protocol genshin impact so uh i was not expecting a lot of announcements like that today kind of came mm-hmm. out of nowhere um spike poncho in the chat says new strand type podcast uh anyway we missed transferring we missed notifications from uh, jeffrey Sorensen with 18 months who said talked myself out of getting a switch oled because i have two special editions already and wanted to wait for a possible switch 4k but now i really want this oh this splatoon oled model and i'm hoping i can find one friday morning any advice yeah go to the nintendo store yeah, <laughs> just go and just get wa- it. Just walk right in and get it. But you got—I mean, you get there like an hour early, and you'll probably get one. But uh, yeah, if you're not in New York, then I don't know, dude. You gotta fucking uh, do that whole stock alert thing. But I- I'm gonna be real with you. Um, 
like the Animal Crossing Special Edition Switch, you can still buy it. It's not very special yeah. edition. Like, it might not be that hard to get. So don't be if it go if it sells out really quick. Don't get too discouraged. It might pop up again. Um. Yeah. I mean, you can still you can regularly find switches online. Like they're in stock. Like right the the base models of all of them. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't put too much pressure on yourself. You're you're gonna get a switch. <laughs> it does look very nice though. And if you're gonna get an OLED, yeah. you might as well get a special edition one. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's so Raven. Thank you for the ten months. And I am and I'm a hungry MF in the chat. It says I got hit by a car while listening to your podcast. I blame you. Was it uh, whose fault was it? Were you walking? Yeah. <laughs> And were you where were you not walking? listening because I was yelling? In which case, I'm very sorry, and I hope you're okay. If you dove out into the street, then it's your fault, and I don't feel bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hannah in the chat says, "Was the other guy also listening?" What a, what a fun coincidence that would be if they were both listening to the Wolf Den podcast. Yeah, they get hit and they're, then, they, then they're mad at each other and then they they find solace in the fact that they were both listening to the same stupid podcast. Do you ever, you ever see the Family Guy bit on the creation of Reese's? Yes. Car, <laughs> car crash. Like, two cars crashing. One guy is holding chocolate. The other guy's holding peanut butter. They cr- crash through the windows and they're like, he got chocolate on my peanut butter. He got peanut butter on my chocolate. And then Officer Reese's comes up, kills them both, and steals the idea. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, new DualSense just dropped. Here yes. it is. The first look at the DualSense Edge wireless controller with customizable controls, changeable stick caps, back buttons, and more. This is the TLDR is this is Sony's answer to the Xbox Elite controller. Today, we are thrilled to unveil the DualSense Edge wireless controller for PS5, the first ever high-performance ultra-customizable controller developed by Sony Interactive Entertainment, designed to give you an edge in gameplay by allowing you to create custom controls. The DualSense Edge wireless controller invites you to craft your own unique gaming experience tailored to your play style. Uh, The the thumbsticks look like they come out completely. That's crazy. they, They do. Uh, the DualSense Edge wireless controller features a number of hardware and software-based customization options for creating a completely personalized controller experience, including ultra-customizable controls. You can make the DualSense Edge wireless controller uniquely yours by remapping or deactivating specific button inputs and fine-tuning your aim by adjusting stick sensitivity and dead zones. The distance your analog say, you all know what dead zones are. In addition, each trigger is adjustable with options to tailor travel distance and dead zones to your preference. For example, you can manually reduce travel distance of the triggers for faster inputs in competitive first-person shooters or reduce the dead zones for precision throttle controls in racing games. I had to pull out my DualSense to see what's different about it because it looks exactly the same, but no, the buttons are black instead of white. Uh, The the touchpad's black instead of white. That's it. <laughs> but I mean, obviously, it's super customizable at all. It's got extra buttons yeah. on the uh, triggers on the back and stuff. Uh, the ability to save uh, multiple control profiles. Once you found your ideal control setting, you can save them to unique profiles and swap between them on the fly. With the DualSense Edge wireless controller, you'll always have your preferred controls. For, uh, for your games ready to go, whether you're facing Norse gods in God of War Ragnarok or rival players in online Battle Royale. Why is that, why, is that locked behind this controller? Can you do can you do different control configurations for games otherwise? Uh, on Sony, I don't know. Because I remember uh, at the very yes. least, they were like the last ones to, 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 to bat with, with the uh, control configurations. I remember on PS4, yeah, you could you could customize control schemes. I don't know if uh, on for this it's for this controller alone. I think you can save the profiles to the controller itself. Oh, that's, that's a big deal. Saying. That's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, beat 'em ups. I don't know who that is in the chat. <laughs> Gifted five subs and Aww. said, "This is my favorite gaming podcast." Ah. <laughs> 
It's wow. So nice why? <laughs> what self confidence this man has. <laughs> Thanks, Wood. Uh, thank you, Wood. Uh, on controller user interface, the dedicated uh, FN button allows you to easily adjust your setup while staying focused on the in game action. Quickly swap between your preset controller profiles, adjust uh, game volume and chat balance and access the controller profile settings menu to set up and test new control iterations uh, while in game. So I believe, so do you remember on the PS4, it had the, the DualShock 4 controller had that uh, back button attachment you could buy for it separately? Yeah, the triggers. So that had an LCD screen on it mm -hmm. uh, where you could switch between three different profiles and... Uh, uh, program the buttons to do what you want them to do. I believe that is built into this controller and it will have the LCD screen on the back so you can see what you're doing and swap between your profiles. Wait, wait, wait. These, these sliders on the back that have the three things, is that the profile those, switch? No, those are for the triggers. Oh, to, for, for sensitivity? Yeah. Okay, that's great because one of my biggest complaints about the dual sense is the the trigger travel because that's like one of the yeah. features but like it's fucking stupid for a lot of games yeah no uh it's gonna the fn button is a separate button on this controller where it is i don't know because i don't yeah see what it the hell where these pictures but yeah the dedicated fn button allows you to adjust your your setup yeah and i don't see an lcd screen or anything i'm very yeah. there's, there's a lot we need to learn about this controller yeah uh here we go Changeable stick caps and back buttons. Three types of swappable stick caps. Standard, high dome, and low dome help you uh, stay comfortable <laughs> in game while maintaining grip and sense and stability. Uh, two swappable sets of back buttons, half dome and lever, uh, can be configured to be any other button input, putting more essential controls at your fingertips. Dome is a stupid word. <laughs> dome is a funny word, yes. Uh, um, I think it's interesting to have swappable sticks. I mean, obviously that's for like, uh, like, like you know, the, the the heights and the dome and 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 the convex concave sticks like makes total sense. Yeah. The elite controller has that. This you can s take the whole module out, and that makes sense because like you know they're gonna go bad after a while if you're playing for like thousands of hours. You know, yeah. They, the, they the next bullet. The next. The next bullet point was replaceable stick modules. Play longer with the ability to fully replace each individual stick module on the controller. Replacement stick modules will be sold separately. That's it's one it, way to solve uh, the drift issue. Yes. Uh, why not just make them hall sensing? If you're going all, if you're going this far, just make a hall sensing stick. You know why? Because it's probably cheaper to do it this yes. way. <laughs> yes. Uh, that that Juan guy. In the chat says the FN button is below the thumbsticks. Below. Are you sure? I thought that was what pulls the stick modules out. Yeah, <laughs> that's what that. It looks like the in the trailer. Yeah, in the trailer, it looks like it's it's part of the stick modules. Yeah, it's hard to tell because it's very dark in this trailer. Yeah, in this three D rendered trailer that didn't have any actual lighting. Yeah, it's part of this. Oh, it yeah. says FN. It says FN under it. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> so that is okay. So, so I guess there's another way to take the stick modules out. I, yeah. th I thought it was like a pressure thing that you just pulled the stick module up. Oh, you have to take the whole like top piece off, and then it looks like yeah. there's a thing on the sides that pull the stick modules out. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, last bullet point: Dual Sense wireless controller features. Dual Sense Edge wireless controller retains the signature comfort and immersive experience of the Dual Sense wireless controller. When playing supported games, including haptic feedback, adaptive triggers, built-in microphone, motion controls, and more. Now give us colors. <laughs> In addition to the included stick caps and back button sets, the DualSense Edge wireless controller comes with a USB Type-C braided Let's cable, uh, which uses a connector housing to lock into the controller so it's much less likely to slip out at a crucial moment. Uh, the included carrying case, which keeps your DualSense uh, wireless controller and components together and organized in one place, allows you to charge the controller via USB connection while it's stored in the case. So does the Elite controller one. Yes. Uh, big deal that it comes with a cable, because they yeah. don't usually come with a cable. <laughs> 
So you're paying. I think did they say it's going to be two hundred dollars, or was that just conjecture? That's just conjecture. In the months ahead, we will be looking forward to sharing more details about the controller, including launch timing, and can't wait to sh- uh, see how the PS5 community unlocks the full potential of the controller. Yeah, I think this thing's going to be like 200 bucks. And if you're paying 200 bucks yeah. for a controller, better come with the fucking cable. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is cool that Sony is getting in on this game themselves, finally. <laughs> yes, it's been a very long time. Uh a lot of uh, like people who play like Call of Duty at a high level, they use uh, PlayStation 4 controllers still, I think. Yeah. Um, so maybe this will get them to upgrade a little bit. I think it's maybe. interesting that they didn't all just use Xbox Elite controllers. I thought that would have been the best option. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, they, everybody who has an Elite controller loves an Elite controller. Right. People who have the money to spend on scuff controllers love the scuff controllers. Right, but th- uh, that's the thing. They get scuff PS4 controllers. Yeah, and I had the consumer level scuff PS4 controller, not the custom one, but the one that you can get at Best Buy for like almost two hundred dollars, and that thing yeah. sucked. <laughs> it was like cool feeling, and it had a lot of cool yeah. features, but like fucking microphone barely worked. It would short out something. It was bad. It had bad wireless. Yeah. It was a bad controller. Um. Anyway, uh, Kate McCat says I want pink. Yeah. So do I, actually. All right, not by the we only only have news from Sony about controllers. Apparently, there was a Nintendo thing that was uh, uh, gonna happen, but didn't happen. This is a little behind the scenes uh, Nintendo situation. Yeah, uh, Nintendo had plans to produce its own version of the Xbox adaptive controller that would have worked on any system. Uh, former Nintendo of America president and Long Island's own Reggie fils stated that during the early days of the Nintendo Switch, the company was inspired by the Xbox adaptive controller. In an interview with Inverse, he claimed Nintendo looked at Xbox's device as a jumping off point to make a platform agnostic accessibility controller of its own. Whoa. That means the controller would have likely been compatible with other consoles, possibly including current gen machines like the PS5 and the Xbox Series X and S. Uh, but since Fiza May departed Nintendo, the fate of the controller has been left up in the air. Uh, my hope is that the effort has continued. I'm not sure if it has or it hasn't, he said, regarding the device. But I also hope, but also my hope is that the controller and the ability for that, to tr- for that controller to connect with other systems is launched and shared with consumers as quickly as possible. Uh, Interesting. We see no, yeah, we see no design specifics of Nintendo's would be adaptive controller. Uh, so we really don't know how, um, much how much inspiration the company took from Microsoft's design. Uh, Pat, uh, my brain just died. We don't know <laughs> how. We don't know how. We don't know just how much inspiration the company took from Microsoft to design a pad that would be used by players with disabilities. A first party controller that works on various platforms certainly sounds useful though, but it's hard to say just how far Nintendo would have pushed the controller's accessibility feature. Interesting that they wanted it to work on other platforms. It's very anti Nintendo. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. But uh, this article says they've gone to on to to produce controllers compatible with other systems. A recent Steam client update added support for Joy-Con controllers as well as several Switch Online exclusive pads like the wireless N64 controller. Accessibility in general is something Nintendo has been sorely lagging behind on. Sony and Ubisoft in particular have made strides in providing comprehensive accessibility options in their games. And Microsoft's own Xbox adaptive controller tries to make the best Xbox games accessible to players from all walks of life. The Xbox accessibility controller can do a lot of cool Mm -hmm. shit. And I don't have one. I've yeah. always wanted to mess around with one because you could do a lot it's, of cool shit. You can even they even have like a like a wee nunchuck type situation that you can plug into. Yeah. It. Uh, that this article knows that controller though is very expensive, and to get all the modules you would need to make it useful is also like would cost a lot of money. Right. Uh, and apparently, button remapping isn't as intuitive as it could be. Um, it's no button remapping's well, it, pretty intuitive because the back of it is all it looks like headphone jack inputs yeah and it has all of the buttons labeled above it and you can like a monkey you could plug in a, a button yeah. to work on that button and, and i mean you know it's something 
you know, mm-hmm. it work like it works, and like the people who use it enjoy it, and they can play games comfortably. Right. Yeah. So Hori makes something similar to this for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, yeah, it's called the Flex Controller. It is two hundred and fifty dollars. But it also has, I think, the module plugins. Yeah, it does. It has the same yeah. sort of module plugins on the back. So you, it's it's basically a Nintendo Switch adaptive controller, but it's made by Hori. And it looks yeah. like it has a freaking tripod mount on the bottom. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's good. Yeah, because one of the things with the the Xbox One is you need to put it on a table <laughs> in order to use it. Right. So I guess this is like, yeah, I guess you can mount this to stuff like a wheelchair or like a or like just a tripod that you can like freaking or, or like a symbol mount yeah. for, a, for a drum set and you can like yeah. put it over somebody in a chair. Yeah, the website has it on like an arm that you can like a tripod arm that you can attach right. to your desk. Uh, Legend of Thieves says 8 Dude just rolled out with one. I thought... It was different. I that's it. This is like a big thing. Uh, Ape Dues one is is a small thing. Yeah, Ape Dues is is like a is like a controller controller. Yeah, it looks like this. Uh, but it is an accessibility yeah. controller. It just puts all of the shoulder buttons right there in the front. Yeah. Um. So yeah, accessibility controller. Also, maybe fighting game controller. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, that's unfortunate. That I feel like Nintendo could have made a really interesting uh, accessibility controller. Yeah. Uh, we're not done with Hori though, because Hori no has a new controller coming out as well. A lot of controller news this the week. I was not expecting this. The split Pad Fit for Nintendo Switch pre-orders are live now. Oh, I can get it. The Hori Split Pad Pro, Split Pad Pro. Uh, has been one of the most popular third-party controllers for the Switch, with the company re- uh, releasing it in all sorts of themes and designs, from Pokemon to Sonic the Hedgehog. Now it's revealed the brand new version called the Split Pad Fit. The button layout appears to be the same, but the controllers are now shaped more like regular Switch Joy-Cons, slimming down the profile. The design still includes extra buttons on the back as well, allowing players to reassign buttons. Um, just like the Split Pad Pro, the controller still does not come with HD rumble, NFC, or wireless functions. Uh, the split pad fit is scheduled to launch next month in Japan and will be available in the following colors. Light gray, X yellow, mint green, X white, mm-hmm. midnight blue, and apricot red. Uh, so the split pad is really cool. It's very big, though. And I like yeah. This is like sleeker. It's still bigger than a Joy-Con, but it's smaller yeah. than an... Oh, wait, what's the blue? I want the blue. That is uh, Midnight Blue. Okay, I want that. If I was going to get the white one with the yellow back, but no, I want the blue one. Uh, I'm going to pre-order that. Oh, it's, it's cheaper uh, than the white one. Why is that cheaper than the white one? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it is available for pre-order uh, from PlayAsia right now. It will. It's expected to ship September 30th. Uh, it might, so it's Japanese only. It might stay in Japan. It might not actually be an American thing. You think so? Yeah. Hori does that sometimes with weird shit. True. But I feel like Hori has like been releasing a lot of stuff internationally now, more so than they ever have. Mm-hmm. If not, if we don't get the full suite of controllers, maybe we'll get like the Midnight Blue or the light gray X yellow controller. Okay. Um, we have a lot of news. There's a lot yes. more shit that happened. Um, let's start plowing through some stuff, starting with Embracer Group acquires limited run games, renaming it unlimited run games. That part's not true. <laughs> I made that part up. Uh, Swedish video game company Embracer Group has acquired not one, but multiple companies and IPs for an undisclosed sum. In a series of press releases, Embracer Group announced the acquisition of Tripwire Interactive. Americans of the Killing Floor, Man Eater, Rising Storm. Uh, they acquired Tuxedo Tuxedo Labs, the makers of Teardown. They acquired uh, uh, Sing Tricks, a vocal processing effects tech, a uh, physical distributor, limited run games, and they have also secured the rights to the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit and the Hobbit literary works by J.R.R. Tolkien. 
Uh, Embracer Group's acquisition of Tolkien's universe includes Middle Earth Enterprises, which owns the rights to the video games, board games, merchandise, and other related works. Embracer Group, uh, Embracer's operative group, uh, Asmondi, already has a history licensing Lord of the Rings board games and card games. Upcoming projects include the Amazon series, an animated Lord of the Rings movie, as well as EA's mobile game, uh, Heroes of Middle Earth. The acquisition of Limited Run gives Embracer the physical publisher and its carbon engine. Internal gameplay, te- internally developed technology that allows for legacy content and highly accurate emulation based retro games to be ported to modern hardware. Limited Run Games will continue to operate as an independent subsidiary. I'm. Conf- what? Where? Where did they get the Lord of the Rings? It, was it part of Limited Run? Like, how, did the Limited Run no, out no. of the Lord of the Rings franchise? No, 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 no. Embracer Group bought a lot of companies. Oh, it's just one of the... It's just one of the many things they bought. <laughs> but they they didn't buy a company. They bought the rights to Lord of the Rings. Yes. So who did they buy it from? The f- Middle Earth Enterprises. Like, the rights uh, holders to the Lord of the Rings. Oh. So, like, Tolkien's, so, like, kids. Wait. Wait. Okay. Because I'm looking this up. It's the rights to the Lord of the Rings are very confusing. Okay. According to the CNBC article, so you know it's true, it's real news. Embracer Group agreed to acquire Middle Earth Enterprises from Saul Zantez Company. The deal gives Embracer Groups the Embracer Group the rights to Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit film trilogies and any Tolkien related movies, video games, board games, merchandising, theme park rides, and stage productions. Okay. Interesting. So embrace a group owns the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, oh, and wait. I'm that's insane. Mm-hmm. Film productions? <laughs> yeah, any future film productions. Not the movies that were already made and not the Amazon series that's coming out, but like anything future. That's insane. <laughs> they yeah. are too they are too powerful. Yeah. Embracer Group has bought a whole bunch of shit, they, and they've just, been acquiring things for a long time. Yeah, uh, they're one of the big ones. Uh, Ten Cent has been buying a bunch of shit. It's insane how big this company got seemingly overnight. Yeah, the amount of things they bought. They own Gearbox. They mm-hmm. own. Uh, I think they own THQ. They were the ones who bought. Uh, Tomb Raider and Deus Ex and all the Western developers from Square Enix for a song. Right. It's insane how much they own. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, what do you think's gonna happen with Limited Run? Because like that's weird to me. Buying Limited Run is weird because Limited Run is supposed to be like an indie ragtag group of dudes who make like just a couple. The whole idea is Limited Run. They make just a couple yeah. of games for like special edition so like a game that is too small for a physical release at at a big publisher they'll make a short run of those games so now yeah. they they have a lot of money behind them so it's like where do we stop <laughs> well this article the nintendo life article says they'll continue to operate as an independent subsidiary so that leads me to believe that there's going to be limited interaction from embracer embracer group proper right. from uh towards limited run games if anything it might you they might be able to use the those resources to expand and go after more games that we never got a physical release like sonic origins did not get a physical release maybe with embracers money limited run can fix that true uh what, but it's it, they, have, they have Sega's money. Like they should just do it with Sega's money. I know. Well, uh, Scott Pilgrim had Ubisoft's money, mm-hmm. and Limited Run did the video games for the, the physical for that. It's because Ubisoft didn't give a shit. <laughs> True. Uh, Bird's Eye View. Thank you for the five months. Thank you. Uh, just cause devs. Just cause. Just cause. Devs spent nearly two years working on a canceled Iron Man game. I mean, if anybody's going to make an Iron Man game, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. In 2012, Disney and Marvel contacted Avalanche Studios, the team behind Just Cause, and began working with them on an Iron Man game that never saw the light of day. 
News of this uh, never released Iron Man game came from Min Max interview with uh, Avalanche Studios co-founder uh, Christopher Sundberg. The studio is mainly known for the open world franchise Just Cause. Those games tend to be massive, filled with explosions, action, flying, and whatnot. Uh, on paper, it sounds like a game starring Iron Man seems to fit the studio. Uh, according to Sunberg, who left in 2020 uh, to form his own studio, there were problems with how fast Disney wanted the game made. Uh, Sunberg told Minmax that it would have broken the studio completely if they had hired all the necessary people to finish the game in the short window Disney wanted. We would have had to hire 70 to 80 people uh, uh, to the teams uh, that would have had responsibility for the new project. Uh, according to Sunberg, it was a tough one to stop working on. He was disappointed that nearly two years of hard work uh, the team had put into the game just went into the toilet. Was it for a movie or was it just Iron Man? I think it was just Iron Man. Oh, that's uh, a he shame. He confirmed that the game would have let pl- players fly anywhere as Iron Man, uh, f- focus on melee combat similar to the Arkham games. It's weird that they, if it wasn't going to be tied to a movie, it's weird that they wanted it done quickly, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, a lot of these, like, uh, movie studios and stuff, they, they, yeah. they don't, I don't know. They don't know what, like, game production cycles are like. They, they just want the shit yeah. out immediately. Uh, yeah. And it ruins they view things. it as, yeah, and they view it as marketing for the movie, they like right. an action figure or a T-shirt. They don't view it as like a work of art in and of itself. It takes a lot of time and a lot of money to right. do and do right. Uh, Tofu Nofu, thank you for the Prime subscription. Uh, all right, next up, Genesis Mini 2 full game lineup. I saw this and uh, thought we knew about it. Most of the stuff. No, already. we knew some of them, but now we got the oh full, God, huge, the full lineup. Yeah. Uh, does it have? Does this article list the the U.S. games? Yes. The CGP- oh yeah, it does. Okay. Wait, they're different than the because it it's coming from Japan. Like like, yes. like my pre order is coming from Japan. Yeah. So even the ones. Uh, going to North America and Europe are still coming from Japan. They're just designed specifically for. North America and Europe. Interesting. Okay. Yes. Uh, Afterburner 2, Alien Soldier, Atomic Runner. It's 61 games. I don't really want to go through. No, we're definitely uh, not. I saw a tweet that had them like laid out uh, in a way that was like that, that, that you could read, that you could see them. Earthworm Jim 2, Fatal Fury 2, uh, uh, Golden Axe 2, uh, Herzog Zwei, uh, Outrun, Outrunners, Fantasy Star 2, uh, Rise Star, Shadow Dancer, The Secret of Shinobi, Shining Force 2, Sonic 3D Blast, Splatterhouse 2, Streets of Rage 3, Super Street Fighter 2, The New Challengers, The Ooze, Revenge of Shinobi, Toe Jam and Earl Panic on Funkatron, uh, Truxton, Vector Man 2, uh, Virtua Racing, Echo the Dolphin, Echo the Dolphin, Tides of Time, uh, Final Fight CD, uh, Night Trap, from the Sega CD, Night Striker from the Sega CD, Sewer Shark, Shining Force CD, uh, Slip, Silphied, Slip, Silphied. That's it. You have that game, right? Yes. Yeah. I don't for know some why. reason. Uh, Sonic CD, The Ninja Warriors, Fantasy Zone, Space Harrier Two, and Space Harrier One. Uh, yeah. A lot of games. A lot of games that were on the original genesis mini but were in the uh, japan only oh uh, uh, okay region. i was gonna say a lot of them looked familiar but i i yeah and i also so, always get revenge of shinobi and shinobi 3 confused <laughs> yeah um what was interesting about the original genesis mini was you could switch between regions and you can get access to the japanese games they would just all be in japanese right uh, i wonder if this will be the same because japan has different games as well that would be great. Fuck yeah. it. Let us have it. Even if we can't read it. The more content, the better. Yeah. So, good times. Uh, you're getting this. Yes, I'm I not. pre-ordered it for some <laughs> stupid yeah. reason. Uh, it really is stupid that they're not doing a full release for this. That they're doing it this weird 
right. mean, I kind of I mean, understand I get it because the... it's not going to sell a lot. No, but like, you know, make it easy for people to get and maybe gauge interest in it. <laughs> right. Did I say but... tofu nofu? Thank you for the prime. Well, thank you for the prime. <clears throat> uh, tell me why Sony is being sued right now. Uh, Sony is being sued for five billion pounds or five point nine billion dollars. That's a heavy amount. Uh, over the price of its online PlayStation Store prices, with the plaintiff claiming Sony is overcharging customers uh, and abusing its position as the primary seller of PlayStation games digitally, as reported by Sky News consumer rights advocate Alex Neal, the ex manager, the ex managing director of nonprofit consumer advice organization Which UK is leading the legal action and has said the game is up for Sony PlayStation. I Why did he say that? <laughs> uh, the lawsuit filed with the uh, Competition Appeal Tribunal on August 19th, hey, it's my anniversary, uh, states that consumers oh, wow. have been overcharged for digital purchases of games and DLC as Sony is charging a 30% commission. With this legal action, I am standing up for the millions of UK people who have been unwittingly overcharged uh, we believe Sony is abusing its position and ripping off its consumers. The crux of the lawsuit is that as the primary and dominant seller of digital PlayStation products, Sony is in a position to overcharge for its items. The legal action claims it's doing exactly that, forcing consumers to overspend unfairly and as a result uh, is in breach of competition law. So basically this is all about how Sony is charging you too much to buy things digitally from the PlayStation store. And because they're the only people who sell things from the PlayStation store, that creates an unfair advantage uh, for them. Uh, and that's not right. But that's not Sony exclusive. Like every digital storefront works like that. To a point, like you can buy Xbox games on Amazon digitally. Oh. You can buy Switch games on Amazon that's digitally. a good point. I forgot. Only, We've had this issue before. Buy, yeah, you can only buy digital PlayStation games from PlayStation. And because they charge a 30%, uh, because they have to take a 30% of the revenue from the sales of the game, they're arguing that that's forcing game prices to stay high so that everyone gets a fair cut of you know, the sales. I remember this was an issue. You can't buy yeah. PlayStation like points on amazon or something like that you there's can, like yeah. a we there's like a weird thing that place playstation operates very strangely compared to other game studios yeah uh so yeah they're basically suing because they want they want better prices for the consumer they want uh more the ability to buy digital playstation games from other places not just uh sony oh it's it's just uh, the codes right you, you can, can you get uh you can get the like money from Amazon, you can get right? points but like right. i can go i can go on amazon right now and buy resident evil village digitally for my xbox i cannot yeah. buy resident evil village digitally for playstation so how does that work if you buy resident evil village digitally for xbox on amazon i assume amazon takes a cut xbox takes a cut yeah so how mm. what what happens to xbox's cut I may I it must be smaller than if you were to have bought it directly from them. Right. Right. That that sort of stuff confuses me. Yeah. Um anyway, GTA creator reports Rockstar put copyright strikes on his prototype videos. <laughs> I I'm, this is uh, interesting to me because I always thought Rockstar made the game. No. Uh, one of the founding members of DMA Design, the studio that created the original Grand Theft Auto franchise, is the latest victim of Take-Two and Rockstar's itchy copyright trigger finger. Videos posted to YouTube by developer Mike Daly from his early days at DMA Design were taken down on copyright strikes. Daly was the first employee at, at DMA Design and later created the graphics engine for GTA, the bedrock for the series' now famous style. Uh, Daily first reported the event on Twitter where he said that Rockstar were issuing copyright strikes against any GTA video they can find, including both my prototype videos, 
Now, uh, so now they're trying to block all release uh, of anyone's work on the game and any old development footage. Daily's Twitter was also affected, forcing the removal of a link to download 25-year-old GTA 2 design documents. Can I read what he said? Uh, yes. I see Rockstar are going full fuckers mode again, <laughs> <laughs> issuing copyright strikes to any GTA video they can find, including both my prototype videos. So now they're trying to block all release of anyone's work on a game and any old development footage. I just wanted to read fuckers mode. Yeah. Uh, two videos posted to Daily's YouTube channel were rendered were renders from the prototype graphics he developed in the early 90s. Um, one of the rotating isometric prototypes, another top-down prototype, both of city streets buildings. Uh, the third was a was footage of an old beta copy of GTA. Uh, contacted for a comment, Daily told PC Gamer that the listed reason for the takedown was posting development footage without permission. DMA Design was acquired by Rockstar in 1999 and renamed Rockstar North. It was responsible for the creation of Grand Theft Auto, establishing the energy of the now quite long-lived series. Daily's time at DMA Design was also produced Lemmings, which went on to be a widely loved series. Daily left DMA Design shortly before the acquisition. Another DMA Design founder left around the same time with the with official founder David Jones departing just after GTA 2 was released. The original GTA is not currently available for sale in any format other than secondhand physical copies. Wow. What about two? Can you get two anywhere? Because two, I, you can, I liked two. I think you can get two still. I don't know where you can get two, but I think two is available on Steam at least. Interesting. It's weird that you can't get the yeah. first one. Yeah. Two was a great game. I liked it a lot. Two was very good. Yes. Uh, it is. It is shocking that. I mean, it, it's not shocking because I think Take Two and Rockstar just blindly send copyright strikes to anyone who dares to post any GTA related stuff. Yeah, I think the fact that this was one of the original creators of the entire fucking franchise really gives them a black eye. I, I think this <laughs> really was look bad. This was a mistake. This was YouTube, uh, or well, yeah. it's both uh, Rockstar. Well, no, I, I mean maybe not because it was a YouTube video and Twitter. So that yeah. But that sounds a little targeted. That doesn't sound like an automated thing. Yeah. YouTube was a little trigger happy. They took down Spawn Wave twice. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> in the past couple days. <laughs> um, Yeah, I don't know. That sounds like Rockstar being pieces of shit. That's what that yeah. sounds like to me. Uh, anyway, uh, Death Stranding is... Uh, Death Stranding's launch on PC Game Pass did not involve Sony. Yeah, so not only is Death Stranding coming to Xbox's Game Pass, Sony didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, so I will never get my my PlayStation Five save file of Death Stranding <laughs> onto my computer. Great. Uh, rumors were true. Uh, Death Stranding is coming to Game Pass tomorrow. Uh, oh, today, August twenty third. It's available on Game Pass today. Sony has since gone on to share that uh, with a statement with Push Square uh, stating that matters relating to the PC release of Death Stranding were managed by Kojima Productions and 505 Games, and that Sony Interactive Entertainment has no involvement in this promotion. In case you didn't already know, Sony owns and funded Death Stranding. It certainly is far from the first and last time that so a Sony title has made its way onto Game Pass, but this is one of the rare occasions in which many of us were left asking exactly how... Kojima Productions and 505 brought Death Stranding to a rival subscription service. While there is still no concrete answer confirmed by any party, we do know that Sony was not involved, and the console version of the game remains exclusive to PlayStation, and the only camp only the campaign version of the game is arriving on Game Pass. Push Square also mentioned it is possible that different licensing agreements may be placed uh, for different versions of the game. Hello? What's the difference between the campaign version of the game and the regular game? Uh, I don't know. I didn't play the game, so... That's is the whole thing a campaign? Is there a multiplayer component? I didn't think so. I mean, the multiplayer <laughs> is that like you leave shit in the world for other people. Like right. You pee on the ground and then like flowers grow out of it or something. Yeah. <laughs> campaign in opposition of the director's cut. 
Oh. Oh. Okay. That's fine. Whatever. Yeah. The director's cut is like eighty dollars on Steam or something. Like I, Jesus I went to go like get it, and then I was like, well, I don't know about that now. Why? <laughs> Why I don't know. I'm gonna look so it back. Up. I'm gonna look it up again just to yeah. double check and make sure I'm not being stupid. But yeah, I mean, this is a little bit of a shame because uh, with the news of the PlayStation launcher, I was thinking like, ooh, if there's gonna be a PlayStation launcher on PC, maybe I'll be able to get my I'll transfer into my save over. Uh, oh, the director's cut is a $10 upgrade, I think. Oh. But that's if you already own the game on the platform right. you're buying it for. Right. Yes. right. You don't own it on Steam, so you would need to spend the $80. So I think, I think it just, the price just got lowered of regular. Of the, it's only forty dollars for Death, Str- Death Stranding Director's Cut. It's forty dollars. Right. If you have the game already, you could pay a ten dollar upgrade. I don't know what I was smoking. Where I thought it was eighty. Maybe it was uh, maybe it was like sixty plus ten to make it seventy. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, that's what I think about Death Stranding. I want to play it again, but I don't want to have to replay the ten hours that I spent on it already. <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh, KOTOR remake. New developer because Aspire did something fucked up, apparently. Okay. Uh, I will keep this brief. Um, Star Wars, the Star, the remake of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic uh, is no longer being made by Aspire, who are owned by Embracer Group. Uh, instead, it is being made by Saber Interactive, who is also owned by Embracer Group. <laughs> <laughs> so Embracer Group just moved it to another studio. Yes. Is what happened. Uh, makes sense because this is a very high profile, uh, release. It's Star Wars. That's the little Republic. Many people consider it the greatest Star Wars game of all time. I think those people are a little, little out there, but whatever, (laughs) you know, like what you like a little eccentric. Um, Yeah. So I think they saw like the problems going on and they know this is a big deal. So they moved it over to another developer who probably is more suited for making, original content rather than a game that's mostly known for porting games to mac and switch right uh yeah something was up with the aspire version uh i think they put a little too much trust in aspire because they've done a great job with ports but the ports were really just yeah they did nothing to the port they were just the pc version saved as for nintendo switch yeah (laughs) and then they royally messed up the knights of the old republic port because the game didn't get past you couldn't yeah there's a game breaking bug couldn't get past the middle part um so yeah something was up and i'd like to know i i like to be a fly on the wall and figure out what happened there uh okay and next some news about the last of us tv show yes we finally have some sort of footage from it in a tweet showing various scenes from the recent last of us tv show teaser trailer hbo revealed just how closely the upcoming series will hew to the game's framing pace and even character expressions the footage shows the uh, kind of parody with the source material that we aren't used to seeing in live action adaptations of video games of course fans may appreciate this as video game adaptations often skewed for drifting too far from the original work that made them popular in the first place News of The Last of Us television adaptation first broke in March of 2020. Uh, Craig Mazin, a writer behind HBO's Chernobyl, along with Naughty Dog's own Neil Druckmann, uh, sought to bring the life of Joel and Ellie's tale uh, of struggle and survival in a post-apocalyptic America. HBO, Sony Pictures, and PlayStation Productions are all working together uh, on what Druckmann at last year's Summer Games Fest called the most authentic video game adaptation yet. And from the eight-second clip HBO tweeted today, Druckmann may not have been exaggerating. I was shocked to see Nick Offerman. Yes, I forgot he was going to be in this. I didn't know at all that he was going to be in it. Yeah. And he's Bill? So, yes, I believe he's Bill. Right. Interesting. So, uh, so that looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks like The Last of Us. I can't wait to explain this to my in-laws that this is just a, based on a video game and that it is just it's not going to be happy. It's not a pick-me-up <laughs> show. I'm getting Walking Dead vibes. It's because this is on yeah. the TV show and it's very serious. I bet it'll yeah. be good. It looks like it'll be good. I hope so. It it'll be better than Uncharted. 
All right. Let's say the least. <laughs> Uh, last we have here is the new Saints Row is getting trashed by critics. Uh, it is getting kind of expected this a little bit. It is getting very trashed by critics. Uh, sure, some reviewers praise parts of uh, Saints Row, including the character creator, which was released earlier this year, robust enough uh, to instantly become a mini monster factor for players. And its new setting, the fictional Santo Asilio, uh, NPR described the writing as witty and compelling. But many reviewers were largely negative. AV Club said Saints Row is dull, buggy, and has flashy concepts, but very few ideas on how to execute them. VGC called it painfully generic. Inverse deemed it a middling experience, and Ars Technica said it's beyond redemption. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. It is currently sitting at a 63 on Metacritic. Yikes. Yeah. Uh, I, I, was uh, never, I never got the appeal of Saints Row. I know you like it, but the Saint, the whole appeal of Saints Row, especially the later games, was as GTA got more serious, Saints Row stayed humorous. Mm-hmm. Like it, Saints Row kind of like knew what it was and wasn't trying to be like a Martin Scorsese film or like a Francis Ford Coppola film or The Sopranos. It it knew it, it, this was a this was a big jokey world. And you just want to have fun, so it leaned into that. And it was very popular with not just fans, but like critics as well, um, because it was genuinely funny and because it like knew that it was a video game and it played into the video, the idea that you were playing a video game rather than trying to be a serious movie with all the like what the last two GTA games have been. Uh, This was a big deal because it's a full reboot. Um, It's from the original developers Volition. It's the first one um, since the fall of THQ. Like the original THQ. So like there was a lot riding on this. Uh, it was the first one in, in like I think 10 years too. Um, and it's, it's not doing it for anybody. Which is a shame. Metascension says Saints Row 3 had an insane humor that made up for its jank. I was just going to say wasn't Saints Row 3 also jank? Um, I mean they're all jank to a point. They're open world games. And, There's uh, like a certain level of jank you can accept. H per Secchini says uh, GTA, but cheaper, except that it's yes. not. It's the same price. Well, cheaper in terms of like the way it's made is made. Cheaper. Like, it's, it's GTA at home is what it is. It's Kirkland yes. brand GTA. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And which is why I never saw the appeal because we already right. have. No, it. it's and for the same price. It's the it's a, a better version. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, is that everything? That's everything. We talked about so many things today. We did. But we... now it's time for what you're all here for. Oh, that's so true. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! I just realized I wasn't showing my camera to you this whole time. Too bad. Uh, so this this is uh, from freaking Delani, uh, who says... I can't believe people are talking about Halloween when we haven't even had 9-11 yet. <laughs> uh, it's dark. <laughs> anyway, uh, guys, we're changing the name of the podcast. Big announcement. Yes. It is not going to be called the Wolf Den Podcast anymore. No. It will be called Wolf Den Podcast Weekly Gaming Recap. <laughs> Big changes here at the Wolf That's Den right. Podcast. <laughs> Big changes here. The podcast you knew is no longer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> also, no podcast next week. Big announcement. Yes. No podcast next week. Because we're changing the name. It takes a long time to change the yes. name of the podcast. We're giving you a week to get used to the idea. <laughs> Yeah, no, we're, uh, I'm going away and it's going to be a pain in the ass, so I decided no. You yeah. don't get one. Too bad. Um, anyway, uh, Tech Niner says, Wolf Den Podcast live. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to talk to you people real quick. Yes, starting off with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. 
H. Persini in the chat says, I hate when podcasts change order on, on my podcast app. That's why we're not, that's why we're keeping it Wolf Den Podcast. Yeah. And then we're just adding weekly gaming recap because it's like, yes. Because that's what the podcast is. And I want people who don't know us to know what the yeah. podcast is about. It's called Search Engine Optimization. Yes. Look into it. Yes. Anyway. Uh, now I'm going to look at the people who commented on last week's Wolf Den podcast, like Irv64, who says, if there's no screaming in the back in the beginning, then I ain't watching it. There was a little bit, of, a little yell today. Yeah. I'm trying to be more conscious now because I don't want to wake people up. Uh, Keyholes says, the other, the other annoying thing with having to go through multiple launchers is that for... Lower end PCs, having those programs open at the same time as an intensive game is a huge draw on resources. This is a very good point. You yeah. usually can't close them without also closing the game. For players who aren't flush uh, with cash, it can really suck the joy out of it. To buy a game you're really excited for, which then runs at a choppy FPS rate with your computer's fans sounding like they're attempting the next moon landing. I'll say uh, um, that is, I learned, I just learned that having a launcher mm -hmm. is something that will make your game not verified on the Steam Deck. So if everything really? runs great on the Steam Deck, but it requires a launcher to start, Steam will be like, nah, you, it's not, it's not uh, 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 verified, which I, which I think is a good thing and Wood thinks is a bad thing. I think it's a good thing because I tried playing Jedi Fallen Order and it had a mm -hmm. launcher and it took me, it was janky to get the launcher to, to, to log me in and do all that shit. And yeah. uh, I just I just decided not to play it instead of actually playing yeah. it. I was just like, I'm frustrated and I'm going to go do something else. Yeah, uh, I don't, I, I like it makes total sense because like, especially because the Steam Deck is specified hardware. It's like very specific. It, ha it has to fit with like in certain parameters and launchers will probably just put a lot of excess strain on what the system can already do. It's right. already doing a lot for what it is. Right, right. So Seven says, I wake up to the Wolf Den podcast, so the yelling actually kind of helps me. <laughs> <laughs> that now I don't know what to do. Uh you can't win. That's what you can nah, do. Ah, true. You can't win. Dennis Rigdon says also, I wonder how many times was when death is on the line was quoted. What is that from? Yeah, what is that from? When did we say that? Be more specific. Going in against the Sic Sicilian when death is on the line. This is a, what is this? A princess bride? It's a princess bride thing. Oh. People, I pe Princess Bride fans are weird. <laughs> but yes, they are. <laughs> uh, anyway, Robert Taylor, Sonic Unleashed slander will no longer be tolerated. Bob, your days are numbered, old man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting threats for my Sonic Unleashed slander. I, you know, I did buy the 360 version of Sonic Unleashed because it was on sale for five bucks and I want it. I haven't gotten around to it, but I do one of these days want to actually play it because we had the Wii version and my understanding was there was no real difference between the two. Right. But I'm beginning to think a lot of the, the, this love for Sonic Unleashed comes from the 360 and PS3 version of the game, which okay. I don't necessarily believe, but I want to see it with my own eyes. Um, I still maintain that the Werehog is sucks and he's stupid and he's dumb and he should have never been in a Sonic game and it contributes to the fact why we don't recommend Sonic Unleash. Yeah, like I liked the Sonic parts. But yeah. we always say this. 50% of the game is good and 50% of the game is bad and 50% if 50% of the game is good then it's a bad game. That's a failing <laughs> grid. And the same goes for Batman Arkham Knight. Anyway, Bradfoot <laughs> Outdoors in the chat uh, or Thank last you. week says it is irritating that Sony is spending money on making Game Pass worse when that wait what? 
Oh, because they were okay. Yes, no, this makes sense. Yeah. It's irritating that Sony is spending money on making Game Pass worse because Sony was paying developers not to post on Game Pass uh, when that money could go towards making their own platform better. Very true. This is not like an exclusive where the Sony player gets access to a game that Xbox users don't. Sony players gain nothing from this. Sony management just gets an excuse to half-ass PS Plus content if they can keep games off of Game Pass. That is very true. That's a very yeah. good point. Uh, yeah, I, it makes sense. It, you know, you're using resources to cripple competition instead of making yourself better than the competition. It doesn't really do anything. All it does is harm, you know, your player base in the end you know yeah you're giving game develop you're giving developers money for not putting the game on game pass but what about putting them on ps plus instead verzino says bob the way you read comments hurts my head i can't read <laughs> I, what I, these headphones i have somebody reading them to me and i'm just reciting yeah. what they're saying and it's very hard to do that you should try it sometime yeah uh, Willis does the same thing <laughs> <laughs> Now we're in the chat after I thank yes. DMRX for the gifted subscription. Uh, uh, sushi sushi Solar. Solars. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Wait, did you think the Wii version was the Unleashed? They are completely different games. Are they different? I I think they are different, but I don't know like how different they actually are. I always assumed that the difference between the two versions were... Uh, the 360 and PS3 version had a open hub world like Mario 64, and the Wii version had a map screen. <laughs> that was it. Here's a side by side with all of the versions, including what's the what's what's this first one? Java. Oh, uh, maybe there was a cell phone version. Oh uh, yeah, this looks like yeah. Oh, it's Russian. Okay. Anyway. Ooh. I mean, it looks. I mean, I, I mean, visually looks worse, but it looks yeah. like the same game, just graphically worse. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. One of these days, I'll get to it. This looks you know? fine, though. This looks fine. It just why they stretch the widescreen in this in this yeah. video? It, it shouldn't be that wide. Oh, PS3 does look a lot better, though. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, anyway, uh, Kate McCat says, is there anything that works similar to the Ioneo Air but isn't as expensive? Yes, the Steam Deck. <laughs> I like the <laughs> Steam Deck Switch Lite hybrid uh, of it all but is ex expensive. It's not good. Like, for $600, uh, I mean, you can get the cheap one for, like, 500 which is really not bad for what you're getting. But mm -hmm. that's still a lot of money for something <clears throat> that you can get better somewhere else. Like, like uh, it depends on what you want to do. Like having a window, if you want a Windows handheld, then you kind of got to spend the $500 and you kind of have to accept that you're going to have a janky time. If you want to play games that are on Steam, get a fucking Steam Deck. Best experience you can have playing PC games on a handheld is a Steam Deck, 1,000%. If the games you want to play are emulators or on Android, by chance, I uh, Ein Odin is the fucking way to go, baby. Anyway. Apparently, I'm getting a Retroid Pocket 3 like any minute now. I did sh It started shipping out, which is like insane because it just got announced like two seconds ago. I, I don't know how you keep up with all these fucking things. <laughs> I don't know either. It's very hard. Um, I also, the last thing I did on Sunday was I made a uh, Game Boy macro. I made the DS Lite macro mod where you uh, literally just ripped the top screen off. Yeah, yeah. How did that go? It went fine. One of the it's got some difficult soldering like uh there's yeah. a resistor you need to put on so that it thinks that the top screen's there and the resistor mm -hmm. is the smallest component 
I have ever maybe held in my hand. Yeah. It's incredibly tiny, and you have to solder two points on it. Oh. Um, and then in the end, you get a worse DS light. <laughs> So like I don't know I don't know if it's really worth doing it kind of looks cool as long as it looks cool that's all that matters yes uh, I haven't watched the last stream you don't have to it'll be next week's video because I, I yeah. tried to I tried to do a video ahead um anyway the pocket three is on way to your house Bob you can't run okay I need to double check I might not be here when it comes. And I might be like a week late to the to the uh, uh, Retroid Pocket Three. I mean, I was like months late to the Retroid Pocket Two Plus. So, right, is it coming to your house or is it coming to the PO box? It is coming to my apartment. Okay, uh, Bob, you ever going to check out the Mister Project? Uh, yes, but I feel like I missed the boat on it. I gotta wait a little bit. I got this thing that I have to talk about. It's an open source thing that is just all of the uh, 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 like different types of cartridge slots and it plugs into a computer and I think it's just for dumping games. I'm not even sure. I have to figure it out. It's some Japanese thing. I don't know if it's just for dumping games or if it's for playing emulators on it, but I'm pretty sure it just plugs into a computer. I remember seeing something. It's very similar to that, but it was controller parts, and it's for testing controllers. Oh, that sounds really cool. Like, yeah, I, I fucked if I remember what it was <laughs> called or who makes it. Uh, do you know about the whole Retroid Taki drama? No. I mean, I know that there is some, but I, I haven't watched the video yet. Still, it's sitting in my watch later because I've been through hell the last couple of days. I've been very busy. Retroed 2 cart reader ROM dumper for Super Nintendo Genesis and more. This is not the one that I have, but this is pretty freaking cool looking. Yeah. That's oh, you sick. can get a plug-in for N64 games, for Game Boy games. Here's what I need. I need to take my save file from Mega Man 64 mm -hmm. and put it on the computer. Now, that could be done if it was transferable to a memory card, but it is on the cartridge itself. Mm. Now, so apparently some Mega Man Legends cartridges don't go to the cartridge. They go to a memory card, but some what? stay to the cartridge. That's weird. Uh, it's very weird. I It's very hard to find documentation on this or what to even do. Bob, where are you moving to? I'm not telling you. <laughs> Probably Long Island, but uh, uh, you'll, you, 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 you can't know the secret location. <laughs> It has a, con a controller for the me N64 memory pack reading. There are some older N64 cart dumpers that let you migrate save data. Maybe this thing that I got, this weird Japanese thing that I got, will be able to do it. That would yeah. be great. That would be great if it did that. The box anyway. art for Mega Man 64 says memory card. That's what, yes, but it doesn't actually, I think they're, that's what I mean. I think some have memory card and some don't. Okay. Because the one that we have is not, it's, it doesn't save to a memory card. Or you can't copy it or something, like. Or maybe, I don't know. Or this is what I think I read somewhere. It it says memory card on the box, but it doesn't actually fucking use the memory card at all. <laughs> it's like a lie. Or maybe that's an old version of the box art that like didn't make it to production because it doesn't use no, it doesn't use the memory card. Right. 
So could you import it with your device, copy the saved data over a ROM of another version and do a fake export? If you are dumping the ROM, you should be able to dump the save that's on the cartridge. Which is my understanding. Answers.com. How do you save in Mega Man 64? <laughs> See, I have two, bo I found two box arts. Here's the one. Okay. No, here's the one that has the memory card. Oh wait, this one has the memory card also. It's missing some other shit. What does that say though? Rumble pack, expansion pack. Oh, that's the memory. Sure. Okay. The bigger one is the rumble pack. Yeah, right. the bigger one's the rumble pack. Okay, that's uh, what this is. Okay, this is the box art with the memory card on it, and this is the box art without the memory card on it. Okay. You can't, you can't According really to this Reddit post, it doesn't save to the memory card. It saves to a one megabit flash RAM chip inside the game itself. Right. So it's not even like a battery backup where you could like replace it on your own. Bob, have you tried holding start on boot with Mega Man Legend 64 and does it load a menu? Uh, I think I did do this. I think I did do this. I think that works with uh, Perfect Dark, but it does not. I don't think yeah. it works with Mega Man 64. I mean, I'll try it. I literally have it hooked up outside. I will, I will try it right after this podcast. This game is fucking $749. Excuse me? What? Oh, it's new. It's brand new. That makes sense. Okay. It only works with games that use memory cards. Oh, well, it doesn't use fucking memory card. It doesn't use it. <laughs> anyway, thank you for hanging out, everybody. It's time thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. right here on twitch.tv slash wolfden, regardless of what we wind up calling it. Uh, if you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfman Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also on audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfman Podcast, so your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. We're changing the name of the podcast to Wolf Den. Happy fun time with Wolf Den. <laughs> uh, why haven't you gotten the Mega Man split pad? Because I got too many controllers. So I don't want to get the same <laughs> one a, a million times. Uh, all right. We're going to raid somebody. Uh, reminder, no Wolf Den podcast next week. But we will come mm -hmm. back the following week stronger and better than ever. That yes. part, I'm not entirely sure about. But... <laughs> It just sounded good in the moment. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Watch out for some videos uh, this week and next week. And I've been doing shorts. I'm going to do another YouTube short next week. I don't know how it's going to go, but it hasn't been going too great. But we're going to truck through it anyway and see. It's a little test. These are little tests. Um, all right, fucking AJ. Here, he's playing Smash. Right. Go watch him. Uh, thank you for being here, everybody. And we will see you later. Goodbye. Bye.